Our daughter is always asking to go in the shop. At least once a day, I'll take her in there to play with screws, glue, anything she can get her hands on, really. We've also turned her closet into a little workshop with a toy workbench, so I thought it would be a fun idea to build a little toolbox for her second birthday. I started out with a rough piece of walnut that would only be useful for a small project like this. I took it through the normal milling process, I jointed one face, then one edge, I ripped it to rough width at the table saw, and then resawed it in half. In cases where I'm not worried about preserving material, I prefer to resaw at the table saw because it's already set up for ripping and I don't have to move the dust collection back and forth. I use the small offcut to create the bottom panel of the toolbox. I like to get panels like this out of the way even though it won't be needed for a little while. These light duty parallel clamps are perfect for small panel glue ups like this and is pretty much the reason I got them in the first place. There was some nice figure in the walnut that also surrounded a knot. I added black India ink to some epoxy to fill the voids. The underside of the boards have blue tape to prevent any leaks. I used a torch to help any trapped air escape, which also lets the epoxy flow deeper and more easily. I let the epoxy cure overnight. After taking the tape off, you can see that the epoxy made it to the other side, which is exactly what you want. In some cases, you may need to do a second pour, but that can always wait until you remill the material. I took the pieces back to the joiner to get a flat face, and then planed them down to final thickness. In this case, they were a touch over 3 eighths of an inch. I then jointed a square edge before heading to the table saw. I ripped the pieces to width, and then cross cut them to length, and this is a situation where a planned design should just be a suggestion or a road map. The design called for a 12 by 7 box, and I cut those initially, but it seemed too big and cumbersome, so I knocked it down to 10 by 6, and think it was the right call. I was a bit hesitant to use quarter inch dowels in such thin material, but it actually worked out pretty well. I'm using 3 16 inch worth of spacers on the inside of the jig, which centers it on the 3 8 inch material. And only two dowels are needed per corner for such a low stress project. The short sides will be inset in arbitrary distance that looks good. I did a few tests with different spacers, and I think I ended up using the half inch spacer. And here you can see what the inset looks like. The long sides are ripped narrower so that they'll be shorter than the end pieces, and then I can add some grooves at the router table to hold the bottom panel. The ends require stopped grooves, so a punch cut is necessary. The handle of the toolbox will be a leather strap. Each end of that strap will be housed in a little mortise, which I'm cutting at the router table. I did a series of plunge cuts, raising the bit each time, until I reached a suitable depth, which in this case I think ended up being about an inch deep. Your boy routed the grooves on the top instead of the bottom of the side pieces, so I added some walnut strips to fix the mistake. The ends get some curves cut at the bandsaw. And cutting the mortises first was important so that I had a flat reference face to work from. The pieces are taped together so that they end up identical, and then I cleaned up the saw marks at the spindle sander using the largest radius spindle that would work for the curve. I then dropped the woodworking act and moved to my true passion of metalworking. I cut this quarter inch copper rod with a hacksaw by hand. Not many have the patience to do it this way, but the results speak for themselves. I planed the filler strips flush using my little block plane, and then sized out the leather strap. I wanted it to be more of a handle than a shoulder strap, so a few scientific tests got me to the right length. I then doubled up the ends and secured them with hide glue. These ends will fit into the mortises that I routed earlier. To make this Nora's toolbox, I had no choice but to route it as such. I typed it up, printed it out, and glued it to one of the long sides. The router bit is a 3 16 inch core box or bullnose bit, and the idea was to make this look sort of hand carved or a replication of handwriting, even though Nora doesn't know how to write yet. 
Anyway, I just slowly followed the text and the results were great. It had the exact look and feel that I was going for. I added a 3 32nd inch round over to all of the edges and moved on to the glue up. Off camera, I prepared the bottom panel so that it fit the router grooves nicely, and there's not much going on with this glue up other than making sure things clamp up squarely and glue squeeze out is managed. After some final sanding, I added a few coats of walnut oil which really brought the toolbox to life. I had considered painting the letters, but I think leaving them bare gives a more subtle and authentic look. I cleaned up the edges of the strap at the spindle sander. The ends were put into the mortise and a hole drilled through the side and leather, but not all the way to the other side. The strap is then held in place with some CA glue and the copper rod I so delicately cut earlier. The last details were some copper nails. I wanted the look of the old timey cut nails but in copper and these ones are sold for use in upholstery and carpet installation and now kids toolboxes. I pre-drilled and hammered them home and that was pretty much it for this project. And here's the little lady with her toolbox. She seems to like it. She carries various items of importance like milk and pacifiers. And this was a fun and low stress project for me but one I'm glad I took the time to complete. The carving on the bottom as you'll see was done freehand and looks pretty similar to the traced one. Anyway, if you're interested in seeing stuff like this while it's in progress, follow me on Instagram at Prillworks. Thanks for watching.